traditional schools, the way they run is in a very impersonal way. And it doesn't allow for um, any natural instincts, any natural creativity. In fact, it probably represses a lot of that. You know, the traditional schools are a pretty sort of inhuman place. Not very many people enjoy them. Kids get apathetic through going to a, a traditional school. You know, they just sort of have their classes set out for them and there's really nothing they have to do themselves. They just go to their classes every day, you know, eight classes a day and 40 classes a week. You know, there's all these cartoons and everything about kids going to the machine and coming out very nice robots to fit into the society. And they're pretty right, really. Generally, I think the kids here um, are more independent than the kids leaving the traditional school because the kids leaving at the traditional school are in a lot of ways still pretty dependent on their parents, <coughs> pretty dependent on the security of, the, of having everything set out for them at school. It's not just like a, a going to school and coming home. It's like uh, your whole life. How else can we run a place like this but on trust, you know? What, what do you run it on? Punishment? A smack on the bottom every time you do something wrong? You, you know, it's just no good. You're meant to come out in a certain way without questioning and just unconsciously do a certain thing all your life. And it's, it's just not good enough because, you know, people when they get to 25, there's the old thing about identity crisis and they think, hell, you know, where am I, who am I? And that's sort of a joke now, but, but it just happens. I'm with my new mates who are Christians. Paul, do I go now? No, stay there. I say Paul's here. Paul's here, take this. Tell gentle Jessica I will not fail her. Speak it privately. What is your will? Jessica, my girl. You can't learn very fully if you're not enjoying what you're doing. I mean, learning can be a pretty full thing if it's a sort of total experience. You, you read the Shylock and we'll all read the Lancelot. Okay. Ready? You're just finishing the, the Shylock. Just say, why yeah. Jessica, I say. Go on. Why Jessica? Why Jessica? Why Jessica? <laughs> <laughs> all right, go on. Who picked me? It does, doesn't it? Mm. I know what you made me do, fellas. I'm just wondering... Maybe that should go in. I think he's made, trying to make one which is... Um, ah! He's undenied. Yeah, it's even bigger than the one I thought. <laughs> well, what happened if you took it apart and put it in the form that we've got it up there? What would happen then? It would take a long time. So <laughs> 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 well, that's what you need to do, I think, because it's... Uh, at this stage, you're getting more and more complicated without seeing an end to it. Now you've already done a square. Either. Now you, when you do that, I want you to be able to do the same thing with the triangles and with the mm, but that's a square. cube. That's a triangle. Well, it's a cube, isn't it? <laughs> and just compare how they look when you've made them just joined at the point. All right. So when you're doing this one, sometimes we um, are scared to use the term classes. I don't know why, but there are classes in the traditional sense. And there's nothing wrong with them. I still recommend mathematics classes for many people. You fellas still going all right? There's a difference between structure, as we've got at the moment, and compulsion. We can't compel children to do things. We can compel them to come to classes, but that doesn't mean anything. They can just come there and sit, or, as in most cases, be a nuisance. teacher and the student can become virtually good friends. The teacher knows if the student's got a problem and the student knows if the teacher's got a problem and they can talk to each other. Yeah, in a traditional school they say if you want to grow emotionally do it outside of the school, you know, you're here to do a trick. Whereas here you've got to accept the fact that you're doing both in the one thing. You're going through the school, doing a trick and growing at the same time and you merge the two and it's really helpful. There has to be some sort of a 
democracy, a participatory democracy, is because the teachers are so accessible to the kids, because the kids are always talking to the teachers. So they can always be picking up the kids' ideas if they're differing from their ideas. No. I mean, there's no reason to presume that there's going to be such a big difference between kids and teachers in what they want. But if there is, that'll come out just from the ordinary content. Yeah, the teachers are very much influenced by the kids' feelings about things. And that helps a lot with their decision making. Well, because um, you hear a lot about how people are going to have to have only a three-day working week in the future, it's going to become more and more important for people to find out what they really want to do. It's not just a matter of playing little games and watching the footy and that in spare time. They're going to have a lot more spare time than that. And they're going to have to get into things they want to do. At a traditional school, you don't have that opportunity because you can always run away from that and do your homework and spend five days at school going to your classes. But here we have to confront what we want to do, the sort of things we want to do in our time, because that's all that's important. Spinach lasagna and uh, rice pudding. All vegetarian? Yes, yeah. of course. They all vegetarian. All vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> we'll end up with mush if we keep going long enough. <laughs> uh, it's not ready yet. Yeah, I'll take those over to the lasagna. Spinach.